All right, guys, I wanted to take the opportunity, since I still had these uh, juvenile copperheads that I got the other night out with a news guy, to uh, kind of go over uh, a myth that you guys hear all the time, I'm sure. I've heard it all my life about uh, baby snakes or young snakes being more venomous or, or being more dangerous than adult snakes because they can't control their venom. Well, these snakes actually can control their venom. When they're born, they can control their venom. Just like an adult snake, they can inject everything they have or they can even give you a dry bite or anything in between. Uh, they're not more dangerous than adult snakes. Uh, they've done some studies on baby snakes and compared their venom to an adult snake. And in a lot of cases, the baby snakes, like the one I have down here at my feet, uh, this little juvenile copperhead, a lot of times the baby snake has a more toxic venom but their yield is much 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 lower than an adult snake let's say an adult snake let's say like a, a adult copperhead uh, may inject 300 250 300 milligrams of venom when it bites you well the little baby snake doesn't have that much venom now it's more toxic, like I said, in a lot of cases, but it's injecting much less, let's say 15 to 30 milligrams instead of the, the large dose you get from an adult snake. So it actually makes the adult snake quite a bit, much more actually dangerous than, than the baby snakes. So when next time somebody tells you that they can't control their venom or that they're more dangerous, uh, you now know that they're not. Uh, well, I got this little copperhead out I might as well go over some of the, the identifiers on this guy. Uh, you can tell that it's a copperhead. Uh, first off, let's start with if you walked up on this snake and you, you need to figure out whether it's venomous, if it's dangerous or, or whatever. So you start looking at some of the identifiers. Uh, let's say the first one you go to is head shape, which you hear all the time, head shape. If it's got a triangular head, it's venomous. It's not always true. Uh, of course, the coral snake doesn't have a triangular head and, it, and it's venomous, but these venomous snakes can actually at times, like let's say the pygmy rattler, have a much more rounded looking head than let's say a rat snake flaring its head into a triangle. Now, with these pit vipers and a copperhead, they're not flaring their head to get the triangular shape. Uh, it's actually more in the head structure and the venom glands that causes the, the triangular shape of the, of, of the head. So this guy has a triangular head. Uh, it's caused by the venom glands back here behind the eyes, of course. And then you've got up here on the nose, it comes to a sharp point and the edges, the ridges are extremely sharp. It's not a, like a non-venomous snake, if it flares into a triangle, these edges around the, the nose and stuff are gonna be much more rounded and smooth looking instead of just squared off into a, to a sharp point. So we've got it, we, we, we've got a triangular head, so we move on to another identifier because you always have to use multiple identifiers. I don't know if he can catch it right now in the video, but this guy does have the vertical pupils that you always hear about uh, in venomous snakes. Now, vertical pupil, for one, doesn't always mean it's a venomous snake. There are uh, a couple species of snakes here in Texas that have vertical pupils just like a venomous snake, but they're non-venomous. Uh, the Chihuahuan night snake, for example, it has a vertical pupil because it's uh, it, like its name, it's a night snake, so its eyes are adapted for night. Now, venomous snakes like uh, this little copperhead I have here can also have a round pupil. In low light situations, their pupil is going to dilate just like mine or your pupil, so it'll be rounded. So, just like I said with a triangular head shape, it is a decent identifier. The vertical pupil is a good step in identifying the snake but you have to combine multiple identifiers uh, to decide whether a snake is venomous or not now the next thing you can look at and I hear a lot of people say well I'm not gonna get close enough to see if they have heat sensing pits you know well we have zoom on every phone you can also get a little small pair of binoculars that keeps you at safe distance from the snake the little small, uh, they sell them at Walmart, they're 10 or 15 bucks for a little set of binoculars. You can zoom in on the nose area and even zoom in to see kind of the head shape and the pupil. But this guy has heat sensing pits up here between the nose and the eye, or between the nostril and the eye, there's a heat sensing pit. So when I got my hand over here, which I'm out of range, so there's no danger, 
he can pick up that heat signature from my hand or let's say a mouse comes by he can see that heat that heat signature even in pitch black darkness uh, He'll zoom in on that, that heat signature and, and then he'll bite uh, and he'll have a meal. Uh, so he has the heat sensing pits, he has the triangular head, he has the vertical pupils because it's not low light right now, there's a little bit of clouds. So now we've decided that this, that this snake is a venomous snake, so let's move on to figure out exactly what species of venomous snake it is. Now the number one thing with this species of copperhead, this is an eastern, that, that, that just gives it away is this guy's pattern. It looks just like a Hershey Kiss. If you look at it over here, it looks just like a Hershey Kiss. That's your number one thing. Of course, the coloration, it's kind of a copper tone. Uh, these guys can actually be gray, all, all the way from gray to even a, a almost white. Uh, this coloration in between can almost be white. It's such a, a, a light colored copper. But it always it's gonna have this Hershey Kiss pattern. Now, there are instances where they have no pattern or partial patterns uh, in those cases you're just going to go with if you don't know what you're looking at you're just going to go with okay it's a venomous snake you've already figured that out uh, so just walk away you may not know if it's a copperhead or cottonmouth or rattlesnake or whatever it is you may not know it doesn't matter you already know it's a venomous snake so leave it alone now with a baby snake these baby copperheads which cottonmouths are the same way i don't know if you can see that on the video right here let's see Steel. He has underneath here is a really bright green neon color. Uh, with both the copperhead and the cottonmouth, when they are juveniles, they have this bright green on their tail. They use that. It's not really a warning. Uh, it's it, it's a it's a lure. So if a little small lizard's running by or a little uh, a little frog or whatever, this guy will sit here and he'll flick that tail, flick it, and it'll make it look just like a worm. Uh, that frog or lizard will see that. It'll come over there it'll, and it, it, it might watch it for a little while and then boom, it tries to attack his, his tail tip and this guy will turn around and boom, nail it. And he's got uh, instant dinner right there. Uh, both the cottonmouth and the copperhead juvenile snakes have that green tail. Uh, I don't have a juvenile cottonmouth with me right now. We'll do another video uh, I'll, I'll, when I get one. But this pattern, I, I, the juvenile cottonmouths will kind of be this coloration a lot of times when they're juveniles. But their pattern is, instead of being like this this triangular uh, Hershey Kiss pattern, it'll be more of a band usually. It might be kind of angled, uh, but it'll be more of a band. And the edges of it will be extremely jagged. Uh, not only that, but the cotton mouths will have uh, this black band around their eyes. It looks like what I call a bandit mask. Uh, but this is a little juvenile. They're not more dangerous than the adult snakes, actually. Uh, all snakes are dangerous. Of course, it's a venomous snake. Uh, when I say less dangerous, that doesn't mean that uh, it won't kill you or it won't it won't rot your hand off. It is a dangerous snake. But when you're speaking of the venom and how much they can inject, these guys are less dangerous usually than the adults. More toxic venom, but what they call less yield, which is basically how much venom they can hold back here in these glands and inject at one time. The adult snakes inject way more when they bite. Uh, these guys can control their venom from birth. Uh, I've also here recently been getting stories of copperheads being aggressive and uh, chasing people like you always hear about the cottonmouth chasing people and being aggressive. Well, if you look at this guy, and this is not a pet snake, uh, if you watched the other night when uh, I was out with the news guys, this is one of the ones that I caught out there uh, with the local news network. Uh, this guy's not a tame snake, he's not a captive snake, and as you can tell, he's just chilling out here. Uh, he's not trying to bite me or, or, or flare. He's not even opening his mouth. He's not striking. He's not coiling up. He's being really calm. Now, one thing, if you look, he is kind of flattening his body out, which this is uh, a typical behavior from these guys. They try to make them make themselves look bigger. Even the big adults will do it. Uh, they'll try to flatten themselves out where they'll look bigger and more dangerous. Uh, he is kind of got his head up here watching me. This is something else. A lot of times copperheads, when they're laying in the, the grass or, or in the leaves or in uh, pine needles or whatever, their whole body. Let's see here if I can. I'm gonna grab some, grab a little bit of stuff here. And you'll see just how camouflage, just how camouflage this guy can be. 
and they'll sit just like this in the grass or in the, the leaves and loose leaf litter and stuff. And all they'll have sticking out is their head, just like that with it elevated just a little bit. Now if this guy was, was say, let's hunt in mice and he's you are hunting uh, lizards and he's using his tail as a lure, he'd have that tail sticking up out of these leaves right here, just kind of flicking it, flicking it, flicking it. Of course, the frog or the lizard's gonna come along, he don't see the snake, all he sees is that little tail flicking and he's gonna try to nail that tail. When he does, this guy's gonna whip around. Or if he's in another position, he's gonna whip around. He's gonna he's gonna grab that lizard, and he's got instant dinner. Uh, one thing, one other, one other thing, I wanted to go over uh, real quickly with you guys. I was talking about these guys not being uh, more dangerous, but their venom being a little more toxic. Uh, the reason their venom is a little more toxic than the adults is because they need to kill prey quickly. Uh, they're not the adult snakes can afford to bite the snake or bite the the mouse or whatever it is and then that mouse run off and they can go track it down. With these babies, they need it to die almost instantly. That's the reason their, their venom is more toxic. Uh, all right, guys, uh, we're gonna be doing a ton more of these videos. I uh, hope you like this one. Uh, if you would, just please share these videos, share my channel, subscribe to my channel. Uh, the subscriptions to the channel really help me out. Uh, I'm trying to get a, a good thing going here. We're gonna have a lot more digital content coming out in the future, so, uh, just share the videos, like the videos, and uh, subscribe to my channel. Thank you, guys.